Welcome back to Cleveland.com's election night updates. Uh, let's get back to the big story of the evening, and that's the gubernatorial race. While we know Ed Fitzgerald, the Democratic gubernatorial candidate, has lost, we're watching whether or not he'll carry his home county, Cuyahoga County. At the moment, John Kasich leads Ed Fitzgerald in Cuyahoga County. Many people thought when Ed Fitzgerald announced that this would be really a big boost to the, to the ticket statewide to come out of Cuyahoga County, which again, is, there are more Democratic votes here than anywhere else in the state. Uh, speaking of statewide races, the only race that's close at the moment is the one between Ohio Treasurer, that's the incumbent Republican, Josh Mandel against Democrat Connie Pillage. She is leading Josh Mandel in Cuyahoga County right now. Uh, Josh Mandel, of course, is from Cuyahoga County. The big issue in Cleveland is the red light, red light cameras, which are uh, going to disappear based on early vote totals. I, I am joined by my colleague and City Hall reporter, Layla Tassi, who's going to talk a little bit more about the red light cameras. Uh, I assume right now those are still going to disappear based on the vote totals we're seeing. Yeah, the early vote totals show that voters are definitely hating on the red light cameras uh, today. It's um, so far in both Cleveland and Maple Heights, which both have initiatives on the ballot to, uh, to bring down these, these red light pro camera programs. Uh, Cleveland, 73% are in support of the initiative, which, which uh, adds restrictions to how the cameras can be used. And, um, and Maple Heights, 70%. Are, uh, so they're kind of equal in that sense. Uh, Maple Heights, the amendment, the proposed amendment goes a little bit further than Cleveland's, which uh, Cleveland's proposes that a, a police officer has to be present with each camera in order for those citations to be valid, whereas Maple's goes a little bit further, and they suggest that in addition to that, uh, the city cannot enter a contract with a traffic camera vendor if payment is contingent upon the number of tickets issued. And also, the, the amendment would require that violations be tried before a municipal or common pleas judge and that defendants be afforded the same rights that they would receive if this were a criminal case, which is interesting because these are actual civil, these are civil infractions, not criminal yeah. ones. So um, in both cases, again, it looks like the, the, uh, this was a referendum on red light cameras and the cameras are going down. Uh, both cities face financial uh, difficulties, Maple Heights even more so than Cleveland. But uh, since you're here, let's talk a little bit more about Cleveland. Yeah. Two things. Uh, what will the reven revenue loss do to the city of Cleveland, and how has uh, the city prepared for this? We've seen over the years declining revenue anyway. Uh, Mayor Jackson has been pretty cautious with budgets, so I can't imagine he's going to be uh, uh, crying out tomorrow for a tax increase over these things. Well, the red light camera program in Cleveland brings in about six thousand dollars a year, at least in the last couple of years. Six thousand or six million? I'm sorry, six million. Yeah. I'm sorry, six million. You're right. Thank you, yeah. Mark. Six million dollars a year, and the uh, and I had a chance to talk with Mayor Jackson. Uh, last week about what this means. And of course, the mayor is adamant that this program is more about safety than it is about revenue. And he pointed to a decline in the number of citations year after year, which he says shows, or it's evidence that, that these cameras affect uh, the behavior of drivers on the road, and especially at those high crash intersections, which he said 80% of the cameras are in the high crash intersections. But he said, he acknowledged that the $6 million loss in revenue is, is no easy thing for the city, and that he is going to have to make some tough choices. Uh, however, he said, I will tell you where I will not make the cuts, and that will be in programs affecting children, parks and recreation, um, all of those, uh, the rec centers will all remain functional. He vowed that those would be untouched regardless of the loss of, of this revenue. But he sort of uh, forewarned that everything else could be on the chopping block. Everything's fair game. And I think he was sort of putting that out there as a, uh, a warning to his opponents on this issue, uh, particularly a few city council members who have actively campaigned against the cameras. Uh, I don't know if you remember, Layla, but it was former Mayor Jane Campbell's administration that first enacted the cameras. And at the time, uh, Mayor Campbell was pretty forthright about this being a revenue generating mm -hmm. uh, operation. Um, I guess the, the question really is, will, will the police department, either by choice, by force, or by better management, start writing more tickets to make up this difference? It's because you might need more police officers out there, according to the city, uh, in these high traffic areas. So we'll, we, we won't know that for quite a while, but uh, that's something we will watch, and I know you'll be on. 
Uh, speaking of City Hall, let's talk a bit about former Council President Martin J. Sweeney, <laughs> who has successfully completed a master plan, and I'm going to give you a brief review of that right now. He got reelected, quietly retired to trigger his pension, came back, got elected again, and then almost days later announced that he didn't want the job anymore and he was going to run for uh, state house uh, rep seat, which he has now successfully completed. And as a bonus to all of that, he gets to appoint his successor. All of this, in my opinion, as a columnist, I've uh, written about this a few times, was really to set himself up with you know the best pension and income options. And I felt that the voters, um, you know, while they've supported Marty and they've appreciated his constituent services over the years. Um, I think are, are allowing him to manipulate this a little bit more. Uh, but I'll ask you more about the process of replacement and who may or may not be possible future council members from this ward. Well, um, that's been sort of unclear at the moment, but, but you're right that, that tradition, city council tradition uh, dictates that the outgoing council member has the right or the privilege of, of choosing his or her successor. And um, they call, and, and they're going to probably invoke the unit rule, which would require that all council vote as a unit, or they would risk being banished from future caucus uh, meetings of the council. So, uh, in this case, he will be able to choose his, his successor. You're absolutely right that he announced that his candidacy for Ohio House District 14, less than three months after he was reelected to represent his ward. Um, he says that that was just an issue of poor timing. That, those were his words, um, although he didn't really explain but that we, very we've well. We've <laughs> actually reported that even before he officially won that re-election, he was already playing the internal politics that are That's necessary true. to winning uh, internal elections in the primary. He was doing that uh, and lining up his supporters even before that election. Um, I mean, and that is politics. I think, uh, you know, I've argued as a columnist that we shouldn't sit back and, and do nothing because it's just politics. So, you know, Marty has successfully won the vote, so he'll move on. Uh, have we ever had a case, or do you know if uh, he can appoint a family member if he chooses? I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it is, there is no um, exclusion to who he picks, right? I, I don't believe there's any exclusion. I think that he's free to choose uh, whomever he wishes. Well, we will, Layla will follow that, and then I'll, you know, ride her coattails on, on the reporting <laughs> on that as a columnist. Uh, that's it for our update now. We'll be back, I guess, in a little less than an hour to update some of these other stories statewide. Thanks for tuning in.